Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Matt, the vocals of Cryptopsy, and you're listening to my podcast, Vox and Hops, where I hang out with fellow metal musicians. Uh, we talk about their lives, their music, and craft beer. As I mentioned in the previous episodes, I just got my media passes approved for the Festival Bière et Savoir de Chambly, which is one of Quebec's premier craft beer festivals, and it's held in this old fort in Chambly, which is just outside of Montreal. And it's, it's, it's really one of the best beer fests out there, so I'm super stoked, super honored to be there as a media. I'm stoked to share my experience, uh, my favorite beers, uh, my favorite breweries with all of you when I get back home after the festival. If you see me at the fest and you recognize me, come say hi, we'll talk about metal, we'll drink some beers. I'm super stoked. Can't wait to be there with all of you. Now, this next guest is someone that many, many of my previous Vox and Hops alumni have told me that I should get together with, and when I figured out and realized who he was and it was actually going to be at Heavy Montreal, I was super, super excited, and I took a roundabout way to get in contact with him, and I totally succeeded in getting him. I'm super excited uh, to speak uh, to one of the most uh, popular metal musicians on Untapped Today on Vox and Hops, episode number 55, I'm with Dave Woody of Municipal Waste. <laughs> I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. Hey, what's up, everybody? Today I'm with Dave Witte from Municipal Waste. Howdy. How's and, everybody doing? Uh, we are at Heavy Montreal, and we just cracked open a Griffin Town from Barassar de Montréal. You uh, are like an elusive white ghost. <laughs> <laughs> the white whale of craft beer in the metal scene. <laughs> I've interviewed many people, and off podcast, they've told me I should interview you. So when I saw you were coming, I was like, fucking right. Yeah, it's going to happen. About that. It's going to happen. Yeah. So tell me about craft beer. How did you discover craft beer? What was that beer? You know, were you always a beer drinker? I want to hear your beer story. I thought beer was terrible for, really? the, for the longest time. Really? And I didn't get it. And then, you know, Sam Adams was popping up and Blue Moon and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, they're like, Blue Moon was a pivotal beer. And it changed a lot of people's minds about what beer could be. You, you know, I don't drink it anymore. But I, it serves purpose back then, you know. And Sam Adams was, you know, I still like some Sam Adams. Then I found out about the... Uh, Samuel Smith's collection over in England. Their Old Meal Stout is probably still one of my favorite beers of all time. Then I became like a, a member of the you know beer of the month club. I got six random beers in the mail and all Just that mail stuff. it to your house. Yeah, that's so cool. But I the, the pivotal moment was when I drank a a, a, a still knocked from Dodola from Belgium. Oh, yes. Because so I was going down to do uh, some recording with Bill from Exit 13. And uh, he was like, do you like beer? And I'm like, no, nah, not really. And he's like, oh, well, you got to try one of these. He opened up the refrigerator, and it was like opening up the, the Ark and Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> All these bright labels and everything. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. And I go, all right, yeah, sure, why not? I'll try it. And uh, I had, that was the beer. It changed my life. I was like, oh, my God, this is beer? I'm in. <laughs> and then the Belgians, like, I went hand over heels over Belgians. Belgians still my favorite. It's, they, they are the masters. Yeah. The, the, one of the originals of the, like, re-fermentations. Just so delicious. Their yeasts are out of this world. Yeah, amazing. And there's a lot of that here. That's coming, yes. Yeah. Icon iconized in, in Canada, in Quebec. Absolutely, because Unibrew were heavily inspired by the Belgian ales and one of the first bottle refermented beers in North America if I, if I believe I'm right yeah. Maudit yeah. or, or La Fin du Monde La Fin du Monde exactly yeah. yes from Unibrew yeah. we took a tour at the, of that facility way back in 2002 when I was really? drumming for Burnt by the Sun yeah, yeah I, I hit them up and I was like, yeah, I'm a big fan. They're like, yeah, come by. They gave us a tour, and they fed us and all that stuff. That's so cool. I've heard there's a great restaurant where you can do, like, pairings there. Yeah, it was yeah, great. They yeah. gave us all this great mustard. That's awesome. Yeah. They were making their own yeah. mustard. It was cool. It was a great experience. What would be if you had to pick your one favorite brewery from the States? From the States? Oh, that's hard, man. There's so many good ones. I'd probably just have to go with Three Floyds because they're my homies. Yeah, yeah. And their beer, every beer is awesome. I love their their metal band beers. I love that they, are they metal heads? Do you know that? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They love metal. And crave it. Yeah, that's and Crave fucking brutality, awesome. as they say. <laughs> <laughs> Great people. Phenomenal beer. Do you brew beer? Is that something you've ever gotten into? I've done a couple collaborations in recipe development and yeah. helped out and stuff like that, but I'm not a brewer. Okay. People just listen to my I find like, like the way that we make albums yeah. and the, the time that we put into it, the thought process, 
the organization that has to go into all that is very similar to making a beer. Yeah, it's a good marriage, beer and music. Yeah, absolutely. They work well together. I feel like nowadays it's a little bit of a separation because music is so accessible to everyone. You put out your album on the internet, everyone can have it. Whereas there's still the elusiveness of a, this great craft beer yeah. and the hunt. I miss those like tape trading days. When you went into the store, you had to go find it. They didn't have it. You had to order it. So that's something that I think makes craft beer what's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. same here. You can, yeah. I mean, the distribution, uh, some places only have, you know, a short reach. Like yeah. Floyd's is only in eight states. They used to be nationwide years ago, and then I pulled back to concentrate to build a brand at home. And it's like, smart and keep the yeah, quality where uh, it needs to be. Yeah, it, it made every sense in the world. The place is amazing. It's like a... It's like a stronghold for beer. It's, I highly recommend visiting if you haven't. I, I would love to. I've played in Chicago a few times, but I know it's just a little bit out of the way. Worth there. every minute. Yeah, I will yeah. convince the, the band to take the detour next yeah, time. Yeah, and if they don't, go by yourself. <laughs> yeah, I'll take an Uber. Yeah. <laughs> it's possible. If you only had to pick one style of beer for the rest of your life. Stout. A stout. Good, man. It's my yeah. jam. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of stout? You, you mentioned the oatmeal Burial. stout. Part Imperial? Imperial, yeah. Bourbon aged, barrel aged. What would well, be I like your barrel? Well, you know, some people can achieve greatness without putting it in a barrel, and that's important. And I, I like the, the big, strong, gigantic barrel aged beers too. But if you can make it taste really sick without a barrel, that's you're ahead of the game. Absolutely. Do you think sometimes they just throw it into a barrel because it doesn't stand up on its own? It's possible. I mean, there's so many accidents in brewing. Like, things turn out way better than I thought, or something gets infected and becomes a wild beer instead. And mm -hmm. there's, there's, a, you know, there's room for, for error to make greatness out of it. Of course, But, yes. you know, there's also a lot of dumps that happen, too. <laughs> right down the drain, yeah. Yeah, it's like a, when you make a weird mistake while recording, and you listen back, and you're like, oh, well. Wow. Happy that accidents. actually sounds good. Yeah, yeah, happy yeah. accidents are f really fucking awesome. Yeah. yeah. You were talking about uh, Zyrd Ciel. I had messaged you. We were put in contact together from Zach from True Brewing, the drummer of Chemist. And you signed your email to me, Pesci Martel, uh -huh. which I, I just I just fucking loved. Uh, it's one of my favorite beers in the world. So just tell I would have loved to have bring you one, but they don't let me bring glassware. Uh, I absolutely would have. So yeah, my Pesci Martel story. First time uh, we played Montreal, where I could actually try and visit the brewery. So this is a while back. Like in St. Jerome, or you went to yeah. the little pub? To, to the little pub where they're making everything. Yes, of course, yes. Uh, so we, we get the Foon Foons. The Foon, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Foon Foon. And uh, it's me and uh, our merch called Mo. And I was like, we got to go to this place. There's no way I can't go. So it's like snowing and like... One walked. of those wonderful Montreal days. Yeah, it's like when the phones didn't work well. So we walked like a mile or two in the wrong way. Fuck. Then I had to double back. It's not close to Foofs. No. Then we it's finally really not close there. to Foofs. They're not open. Uh, they're like, we're closed, blah, blah, blah. And come back at this time, so we're milling around. And I, I come back, and I wound up chatting up with Luke, the, the brewer. And uh, we, we have a lot in common. His wife's Japanese, and I spoke Japanese because I, I played in a Japanese band. And they were out of Pest Mortel. There was a problem with the line. <laughs> and I was like, this is what I came here for. And, and he was so gracious. He went and poured me two glasses off the tank. Really? Down there. And then he gave me a, a, a 750 aged bottle to take away with me. They have the... the what a great experience. That's, you know, when you make a connection with beer people, I find it so similar to the musicians. That's why I mentioned it before. Yeah. Brewers and musicians were artists in their own right. And it's just the connection between metal and beer and beer in general. Like, I've been doing this thing where you bring me beer and I'll give you a guest list. And it's unbelievable the, the response that yeah, it happens. Yeah, it's fun, right? It's, it's crazy. I don't know if you do that as well. Yeah, people bring some stuff, yeah, for yeah, sure. And just, they, they're so proud just to share this thing. It's a beautiful, beautiful connection. The great connection. example of that is Who Farted <laughs> in, in Columbus. <laughs> okay. I Those guys, can't, the great brewery, uh, you know, like... Who real Farted is a brewery. Yeah, That's a great farted. name. Who Farted. Who farted. You know, like a horse hoof. Yes, of course. Who farted. But it sounds like who yeah, farted. Yeah, well, that's the whole goof. Got it, got it. Trevor, he's a real funny guy, makes great beer. But I remember them coming early, 2012, when we were on tour at Napalm Death, and they were like, yeah, we heard you like beer. So they had all these Sixtals, and they were just starting to figure out what they were doing. And, uh, you know, I, it wasn't my favorite beer at the time, but... But I didn't want to be like, yo, this sucks, and like discourage anyone. No, no, you, you never look to get forcing them out. You know, yeah. I was just like, yo, man, uh, you know, I can't wait to see what you guys, you know, turn into down the road. And now they're killing it. They're making great beer. It's awesome. Yeah, if, in Colum if you're in Columbus, I highly recommend it. I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. Being such a beer fiend, 
Do you get excited when you go to certain parts of the world with the band? Oh, yeah. And what part of the world would it be? I'm assuming it's Belgium. Yeah, we, we landed in Belgium on the day off this time. We went right to Cantillon. Good boy. It was awesome. So good. So <laughs> yeah. good. There's sours. It was my first time there. I was really excited. And I had, I had brought a bottle of the, the Vale. Uh, there's a brewery in Richmond called The Vale, making huge waves. They've only been open for three years. Also sours? Uh, no, they do everything. Okay. But uh, Matt Tarpy, the brewer, who also worked at Hilm Farm, said... Uh, was study from uh, Jean Van Roy. I, th- I think it's the guy's the brewery at Cantillon. Uh, he he took some lessons from him and all that, but they made a mixed fermentation, spontaneous fermentation beer in the style of that. So I brought him a bottle over, but he wasn't there. Ah, uh, but you left it for him. Yeah, I, I'm but, sure yeah, you appreciate it. Was it was my mission, like so. To I, meet I, him, yeah. No, it was my mission to deliver the bottle for okay, Matt. Uh, okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that that was exciting in its own right, and then being able to sit there and drink the beer was really amazing. It's it's uh, it's a pleasure that I take on tour to go out, find little craft beer bars, and just you know relax a little bit before the show. Yeah. I feel like I'm at home a little bit, even though I'm so far away. The place I really want to go and I haven't been to yet is Orval. Yeah, that's my favorite. One of my favorites. Yeah, and that's, you know, if you look at it, that's the only thing they make. It's, it's true, amazing. Right? Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a solid, solid white Belgian ale. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So awesome. You said to uh, before we started recording that you had a Lord Worm story. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd love to hear this. <laughs> this is good. I used to drum in a band called Human Remains, and we sh- shared a bill with Cryptopsy years ago in the early 90s to some festival down in Tennessee. And there's, the, videos, there's videos of that online. Is there? There is. Well, I remember sitting there, and it was me and my guitar player, some other people, and we were watching Cryptopsy, and he went into his whole spiel, all right, who's sick enough to eat a worm? And, like, he ate a worm, and he was like, who's mad enough to do it? And then Steve, he, he marched up, and he took the whole the whole cup and ate the whole cup of worms. Fucking right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he bummed him out. <laughs> that was it. It was over. <laughs> Funny enough, I ate a worm from Lord Worm when he came up and did guest vocals right here at Heavy M- Heavy Montreal a few years ago. Really? Yeah. That's he awesome. told me that the key is not to chew. Oh, you just like pasta? You just swallow it whole. Yeah. 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 Wow. It, it, it was cool. <laughs> Wow. And then he passed me his chalice and he walked off stage. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great, man. It was that's super cool. cool. It was cool, yeah. What do you guys have coming up next? Let's go back into the band. Uh, is this a one-off? Are you guys on tour? Yeah, one-off. We played Connecticut last night. This is today. And then we go home. Uh, and then we have one show in August. And then we hit the road full U.S. again in October with Sick of It All and Napalm Death. It's a great bill. It's oh, fucking some huge. Some of the shows man. are selling out already. Of so course, yeah, really yeah. Exciting. And then, uh, then we go back to Europe again for another run in November and December. And then, and then you know, we have stuff booked into next year already. Fucking right. You guys need. I love when bands have a plan. Yeah, we're gonna start writing too. Yeah, when bands have follow. a plan and they follow a plan. Oh, you know, we have an EP coming out the same time as the uh, Napalm, Napalm Death Tour. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. What do you love? What's your favorite beer? I am a hazy IPA. Oh, Yo, you'd love Richmond, where I live. Uh, uh, obsession right now? But yeah. yeah. The, I, Vail's, the Vail's really popular for that. Yeah. I, I, I normally, if I go and buy beer, my, my typical beer night would be, I'll start with a nice sour. But I don't like the fruity sours. I like, like, blended right. sours where, like, it's a young, blended with a barrel-aged, same version of the beer. Right. I really like those. There's a whole bunch of people doing that up here really well in Montreal, such as Matera and uh, Oschlag has a whole bunch of really interesting stuff in that vein. And then I'll go into, like, the hazies. The Boreal de Nogest is, like, the top. Nice, yeah. Rate beer. It's, like, Rate Beer's number one IPA at the moment. And then I'll finish off with a nice... Bourbon. Uh, my, actually, my go-to is a, a Pechi Martel because at that point I've spent how much money, and a Pechi Martel is about, let's say, four to f- four dollars. And you know, if you get your bang for your buck, it's the end, last beer of the night, and I'm happy with that. Yeah. I always, I always drink up. In, in percentages. And yeah. <laughs> like it's at the, the end, end of the night, you, start, yeah. you start with a ghost, and then yeah. you make your way. You finish with a stout. Finish on the high note. I, I do tend to, to, to line them up that way too. Yeah. What about your stouts? Do you drink them cold, or you drink them room temperature? Uh, a little like it, it's fun to let it pour and let it taste it as it warms up because it really opens up. Absolutely, it know, changes it completely. Yeah. It, drinking it too cold, you miss a lot of stuff. That's true. Yeah. yeah you miss a lot. I get so disappointed when I go to a craft beer place. 
and they served me a 10% ice cold yeah <laughs> so I, now what I've done I've, I've learned over time I used to warm it up with my hands but I'm too impatient so I order it I order a beer and then when I know I want that one next I order that one first and then I just let it warm up on the table that's yeah. perfect <laughs> that's a good good idea <laughs> you hear that boys and girls that's so how you do it right do you ever make it down to Hill Farmstead I have not I have not yeah, it's not too far I know that and the alchemists are like in the same area and Lawson's yeah. I have to make my way down yeah I, I saw on the way up here we stopped at the gas station they had some uh, sip of sunshine Did they? at the gas station. So cool. <laughs> I was like, yeah, there's a black cool. market for that shit up here. Really? There is, yeah. Oh, wow. Well. Like so, you- can you go down there and buy a bunch and bring it back? What's yes, the but there's a limit. It's so many liters. It's it's like not that, not as many as you think. Okay. If you stay overnight, it's a little bit longer. But it's and if you go through Ontario, you can have a little bit more. Yeah. But it's 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 very strict. Yeah. You make multiple trips, <laughs> <laughs> or you bring your wife, who's your mule. Oh yeah. yeah. So, it, does it go liter per person? I believe it Percentage does. Actually, per person? I believe it does. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, people. Right. Yeah. Dave, I know you're busy. You got to go uh, play a show. I'm just sweating my ass. I off. know it's hot <laughs> as fuck. I appreciate you sitting down with me drinking yeah, a beer. Yeah, this is great, man. I'm, I really, I'm really appreciate it very much. Yeah. You Thank you so much, and we're gonna have a do a much more longer one if, when you guys come through a headliner. I'd love to chat again and yeah, we'll go ahead and at, at a great bar. You know. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Hey, what's up, everyone? Thank you so much for listening right to the end. You know that I love and appreciate that. Dave, so cool. Uh, We chatted uh, for quite a bit after I stopped recording this, and uh, he told me so many cool beer stories, so many cool craft beer places that I have to go visit. I'm super excited. Uh, He even mentioned that I could send him my future tour dates, and he would tell me which breweries and which cities I should go check out, uh, which is something that I'm absolutely going to hit you up about, Dave. So uh, I greatly, greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much for coming and drinking a beer with me. Next time we hang out, I will get you that Pechi Mortel. Huge shout out to Marimado Langlois from Brassard de Montréal for hooking me up with all the beers for all the Vox and Hops interviews that I did at Heavy Montreal. I greatly appreciated that, and I know that all my guests did as well. So cheers to you, Marimado. I also dropped episodes this week. Episode number 53 was with Belisario de Muzio from Cattle Decapitation. And I also got Vincent and Jules from Dope Throne, episode number 54. So check those out as well, in case you haven't already. Um, If you also want to give the podcast a hand, you should go and you should like, subscribe. And if you have the time, I would greatly appreciate it. And it would help others see the podcast, get more visibility. If you write a review, like, rate, write a review, and subscribe, please. It would be greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, if you, uh, you want to tell me who I should interview what beers I should be drinking. If you are a brewer and you're getting into the podcast and you would like to share some of your product with me, you would like to mail me some beer, hit me up at Matt at Vox and Hops. That's M-A-T-T at V-O-X-A-N-D-H-O-P-S dot com. And uh, I would be more than uh, appreciative and uh, super interested in reading in whatever you guys have to say. So uh, thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a great week, a great weekend. And remember to enjoy life, metal, and craft beer. Cheers, Vox and Hopsets. Oh,